This one, though, the analyst, because I've seen people try to do data analytics with this stuff, and it hasn't been good at this in the past, right? You sort of go in and, you know, originally some of the early language models, people were giving them basic math equations, and it couldn't even do that. So this is, again, these reasoning models can do a whole other level of thing. So this is where you've got data at work across multiple different sources. You've got a spreadsheet here, you've got a Word document there, like we've all got bits and pieces from everywhere. And you want to kind of pull these things together and understand patterns and outliers and all of these sorts of things. So first thing, you can come in here and choose the document or documents that you want to work with. Very familiar sort of concept to things we've been able to do so far. And again, the reasoning model starts to show you it's working. It's going through saying I'm breaking down the tasks, I'm analysing this, I'm evaluating that so you can get a sense of what it's doing. The other thing it's doing is generating Python code. Now, this is incredibly useful for doing the analysis, but you do not need to understand. I don't write Python. It, 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 I'm not doing anything here. It's basically leveraging that. We've actually seen in Copilot in Excel that there's an advanced analysis with Python. So it's drawing on something quite similar to that. Not sure yet how those two things will overlap. But in the end, you basically get analytics, you get a report, you get it generates charts for you. So I think this one Again, I like these two, the researcher and the analyst, I think these are where we level up from just kind of a chat experience into something that has much higher value.